Hello everyone. I will solve few more problems from the model question paper Elements of Civil Engineering and Engineering Mechanics. So, first problem which I am solving is from the fifth module that you all were asking. A police officer observes a car approaching at the unlawful speed of 50 kmph. He gets on his motorcycle and starts chasing the car. Just as it passes in front of him, after accelerating for 10 seconds at a constant rate, the officer reaches his top speed of 75 kmph. How long does it take the officer to overtake the car from the time he started? Okay, so first the constant speed of unlawful car. Here they have given, okay, unlawful speed of 60 kmph. So u is equal to 60 kmph that is kilometers per hour where constant means acceleration is zero okay acceleration means change of rate of velocity right so acceleration is zero 60 into thousand that is one kilometer is thousand meters divided by per hour to convert it into second 60 into 60 so 16.67 meters per second then S, let S be the distance travelled by the car at constant speed that is we know the equation S equal to ut plus half at square. Okay, here A is 0 so S equal to ut. U is 16.67 into t. Then next I have just drawn the sketch. Okay, so let t be the time taken by the motorcycle to overtake the car. Car and motorcycle travel same distance, yes, okay. So, motion of the motorcycle, initial velocity after 10 seconds is 75 kmph, it is even in the problem. So, convert it into meters per second, that is 75 into 1000 divided by 60 into 60. Okay, here I have mentioned 75 kmph and 60 kmph. This is S1 distance, then S2, total distance is capital S, that is S1 plus S2. Here, this is point of the overtake by the motorcycle of police officer, this is the car driver. Okay, so initial velocity after 10 seconds is 20.83 meters per second. Then let A be the acceleration to attain a speed of 20.83 meters per second after the 10 seconds. So u equal to 0 and v equal to u plus at. So v is 20.83, u is 0, a into Time is 10 seconds. So, A equal to 2.083 meters per second square. Now, the distance travelled by the motorcycle in 10 seconds. That is S1. Okay. Ut plus half at square. U is 0. Half A is 2.083. Here we have found it. And T is 10. So, 10 square. That is 104.15 meters. Next. The distance travelled by the motorcycle in t minus 10 seconds with constant speed of 20.83 meter per second. Okay. S2 equal to ut that is 20.83 into t minus 10. Okay. So total distance travelled by motorcycle s equal to s1 plus s2 104.15 plus 20.83 into t minus 10. Since motorcycle and car travel by same distance equating 1 and 4. Since motorcycle and car travel by same distance equating 1 and 4 that is 16.67 and t is equal to 104.15 plus 20.83 into t minus 10. Okay. So 4.16 t is equal to 104.15 that is t equal to 25.04 seconds. Then 3b. For the non-concurrent coplanar system shown below, determine the magnitude, direction and position of the resultant force with reference to A. Okay. So the forces are given upwards 200 Newton. Let this be A, B, C, D given. Here 100 Newton inclined that is 100 square root of 2 Newtons at 45 degrees and here towards left 100 Newton force is there. Now I have resolved this inclined force that is taking horizontal component and vertical component. Since this angle is 45 degree, the component with that theta will be 100 root 2 cos 45 and the vertical will be 100 root 2 sin 45. 
then taking summation of horizontal forces okay horizontal forces here you can see this is towards right that is plus 100 newton then plus 100 root 2 cos 45 then this is in the opposite direction that is minus 100 so sigma f of x equal to 100 newton then vertical forces are only 2 upwards 200 downwards it is 100 root 2 sin 45 so sigma f y equal to 200 minus 100 root 2 sin 45 that is 100 newton now we all know how to find the magnitude of the resultant that is r equal to square root of sigma fx square plus sigma fy square that is 100 square plus 100 square 141.42 newton magnitude of the resultant then taking moment about point a okay let us take moment about point a yes see here one more wait yes now first let me take this 200 newton if i am taking about point a moment it will cause an anti clockwise moment this one okay anti clockwise moment this force will cause an anti clockwise moment right so it will be minus 200 into 2 then this one will cause a clockwise moment so 100 into 4 then 100 root 2 cos 45 passing through the point a so it will not cause any moment and this 100 root 2 sin 45 it will cause again a clockwise moment so plus 100 root 2 sin 45 into the distance at which it is acting is 4 meters so 400 newton meter now theta equal to tan inverse of sigma fy by sigma fx that is 100 by 100 45 degrees then d is equal to sigma ma by r that is 400 by 141.42 2.828 x intercept is the moment by summation of vertical forces y intercept moment by summation of horizontal forces 400 by 100 so 4 meters 4 meters you have to represent it the resultant I have not represented it. You have to represent after finding the resultant. Okay. Then next problem which I have solved is the ladder problem which many of you were asking me to solve this ladder problem. I have uh, referred uh, many of the textbooks and uh, many other materials. It is a very unique problem they have asked. So I have solved it to best of my knowledge that is a ladder weighing 300 newton is to be kept in position as shown in the figure 4b determine the horizontal force p to be applied to keep ladder in position assume all contact surfaces as smooth what they have told that all the contact surfaces are smooth usually the mu value will be given for you people right mu b and mu a so we will use that in the friction component force right but here they have given all the contact surfaces are smooth. In few problems either they will give wall is smooth or floor is smooth here. All the contact surfaces are smooth. So mu A and mu B is 0. So frictional force is 0. Okay. That is what I have taken. Mu A, mu B equal to 0. Then I have represented here two downward forces 300 and 500. Okay. And you will get only RA and RB right and they have given at what distance they, they are acting okay so we I have first found out the distance at which these vertical forces are acting from point A because I have to find the moment right so here the angle is given 50 degree this vertical distance is given right 2 meters for this 300 Newton if I draw a line over here it will be 2 meters so what I am getting this distance horizontal distance what i am getting will be 3.11 similarly for this 500 newton if i draw a line over here this distance will be 4.66 meters now i have taken moment about point a so for this rb rb will cause a anti clockwise moment so minus rb into 4 plus 
300 into distance 3.11 clockwise and this 500 newton also it will cause from here it will cause a clockwise movement right so that is 500 into 4.66 okay then therefore rb equal to 815.75 newton then taking summation of vertical forces equal to 0 ra minus 300 minus 500 that is ra equal to 800 newton applying the p force required to prevent the sliding okay that will be only this is p towards right positive rb towards left negative p minus rb equal to 0 that is p equal to rb equal to 815.75 newton okay then next problem which i have solved is determine the resultant of the force system given here this one the what are the forces given is 50 newton 60 newton 100 newton and 80 newton two are inclined forces that is 50 and 80 i have resolved these forces that is 50 newton upwards it will be 50 sin 30 and right side 50 cos 30 and this one 80 newton force it will be downwards the component with the theta given in that side will be cos so 80 cos 30 and this is 80 sin 30 and this 20 degree this force is like this okay so using the alternate angles what i have done is here let me draw it for you if i draw a line over here then this will be 20 degree right 20 degree so this component will be 60 cos 20 other component will be 60 sin 20 that is horizontal component taking summation of horizontal forces plus 50 cos 30 plus 80 sin 30 plus 60 sin 20 all are towards positive x so 103.82 newton taking summation of vertical forces that is upwards positive 50 sin 30 downwards negative minus 60 cos 20 and this is downwards minus 80 cos 30 so minus 100.66 newton now we have to find the magnitude of the resultant square root of the summation of f of x square plus summation of f of y square 103.82 whole square plus minus 100.66 whole square taking square root of both 144.56 newton is what i have got theta equal to tan inverse of sigma f of y by sigma f of x so minus 100.66 by 103.82 theta equal to minus 44.11 negative sign indicates that the angle is measured in a clockwise direction and here f of x is positive so this is positive x right this is plus positive x direction right so and minus f of y so it will be here in this quadrant so this is negative y right minus and clockwise 44.11 magnitude is 144.56 newton next i have solved the pg problem for the shaded area given how to find the cg all the dimensions here given are in centimeters i have converted them into millimeters and solved the problem it is very simple problem actually so first what i have done is i have taken the total this rectangle big one as one rectangle small rectangle which is has to be deducted okay that i have taken as rectangle 2 i have mentioned it as deductions deductions means you have to subtract it so area of this big rectangle is 100 mm into 140 mm so 14000 right then x means the distance of this big rectangle centroid from axis 1 1 this axis what will be the distance we know it is at d by 2 right that is y sorry y is at d by 2 x is at b by 2 for rectangle so x is 100 by 2 that is 50 y is 140 by 2 this distance by 2 that is 70 next is find af and ay 
a into x 14000 into 50 is 0.7 into 10 to the power 6 and ay is 14000 into 70 that is 0.98 into 10 to the power 6 as and ay now we have to deduct this small rectangular portion from this big rectangle so what is the area of this small rectangle 3 cm means 30 mm 30 mm by 50 mm that is 1500 mm square then distance of its centroid from axis 1 1 will be y and distance of its centroid means here its centroid will be here okay its distance from 2 2 will be x value its distance from 1 1 will be the y value so what is x distance first is this distance will be how much this distance is we know 50 mm right 50 mm plus this distance is given how much 1 cm means 10 mm right then plus okay then plus at half of the distance in this rectangle that is 30 by 2 okay so 75 mm now what is the distance of its cg centroid from 1 1 axis will be y value so first it is here 2 cm that is 20 then at half of it its depth is how much 5 cm half of that will be 50 by 2 so 45 next simple ax that is 1500 into 75 is 0.1125 into 10 to the power 6 Then 1500 into 45 is 0.0675 into 10 to the power 6. Right? That is, we have to find AX and AY value. Finding CG is very easy. If you are finding moment of inertia, one more additional step will be there. Right? So 14,000 into 50 will be 0.7 into 10 to the power 6. And 14,000 into 70 will be 0.98 into 10 to the power 6. 1500 into x. X will be how much? It is 75 means it is 0.1125 into 10 to the power 6 times respectively. So what we have to do next is deductions. Area 14,000 minus 1500. Total area is 12500. And AX value. Okay, summation of AX means 0.7 to 10 to the power 6 minus 0.1125 to 10 to the power 6 is 0.5875 to 10 to the power 6. For AY, it is 0.98 to 10 to the power 6 minus 0.0675 to 10 to the power 6. That is summation of AY equal to 0.9125 to 10 to the power 6. Now same for X bar and Y bar value. That is summation of AX divided by summation of A. Y bar is summation of AY divided by summation of A. So summation of AX is 0.5875 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 12,500. That is total area. And Y bar 0.9125 into 10 to the power 6 divided by 12,500. So X bar I have got 47 mm. Y bar I have got 73 mm. That is what I have represented over here. Uh, that might not be the exact or neat diagram, but I will try to represent. That is you, you represent exactly at distance X. This X bar should be 47, Y bar should be 73. Approximately, I have drawn. Okay. Thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all your friends and classmates. It might be really helpful for everybody who is going to give first semester examination. That is, elements of civil engineering and engineering mechanics. Thank you.